Hello, I'm Shibli. I tweet at, at Legal Aware. And I'm sorry to disturb you, but I thought I'd just say a few words about uh, the current English dementia policy. Uh, inspired, of course, by the national clinical lead, Professor Alistair Burns, who is Professor of Psychiatry at the University of Manchester. Uh, I recommend you have a look at his blog on YouTube because it's a remarkable introduction to the policy as it currently is. The policy is extremely exciting, in fact, and really is a perfect combination of revs, arms and policy which have happened for a number of years. I should really explain who I am. I am very much interested in dementia. I would say I've been working on it for about 15 years. I've been fat published in book chapters. My paper is referenced in the current Oxford textbook of medicine. And I'm a very important paper, which is that over 200 citations in brain on the early diagnosis of a type of dementia called frontotemporal dementia. And actually, I'm not involved with any charity, business, education, university, but I am, in my own right, a patient. And I'm very much an, an interested party in how we possibly might take this further. I go to conferences on dementia, and it's interesting listening to what other academics have to say. I'm currently writing a book on dementia, on living well with dementia. Now, the reason for this is that my late father was an inspiration to me, and he had terrible back pain. And I think what I learned from that, uh, tried though it is, is that it's important to add years to life. Um, people need to have a good quality of life. The issue of early diagnosis is a very important one, and of course I welcome, as will many uh, people, the debate about the use of language. And I uh, strongly uh, welcome Professor Burns' uh, move towards uh, word timely diagnosis. I'm not making diagnosis at any particular stage, but doing it in a very person centered approach. And I think as we move towards integrated care, uh, seeing the uh, convergence of health, social care, and mental care, psychiatric care, that is very much to be welcome. Now, uh, I also recommend the idea of clinicians and the drum seat, but I think Professor Burns would also admit that patients and carers and their advocates have to be very much in the drum seat. As Lennick used to say, always listen to the patient. And in this current climate, GPs tend to be in the following line. Um, it's quite easy to blame a GP, it seems, in the public arena. Uh, but actually, uh, my late father was a GP for uh, probably about two decades. And what I'm worried about, to be frank, is the perfect storm which could be arising in this push for diagnosing more people with dementia. I sympathize enormously that there are many people who do have a late diagnosis of dementia coming to them and um, that isn't on if they have dementia. Because I agree with Professor Burns that as soon as they can have a reliable, correct diagnosis of dementia, they can access the appropriate services. But as we know, things can go wrong in policy. And if you have people driven by targets, if there's a push for trust to be paid by the number of people diagnosed with dementia, there is a possibility, albeit a small one, that there will be some people misdiagnosed with dementia when they haven't got it. Uh, for example, people with a sole diagnosis of depression or anxiety or underactive thyroid, and any misdiagnosis, obviously, we all can see it will be a personal tragedy for all involved. Now, um, 
not to harp on the, my, on my own vested interests, but in 1999 I published a paper in Brain on behavioral found frontal temporal dementia. This is not as big in incidence as Alzheimer's uh, dementia, but certainly it's an important diagnosis of dementia in the people aged around 50. And in fact, I discovered in my PhD at Cambridge that these people invariably have very good memory to begin with. And that's something not to be sniffed at, really, because they have quite profound personality and behavioural change reported by their family members or similar. And uh, it might not look as if they have any memory problems. They haven't, but but they do have an early diagnosis of frontal dementia and uh, clinicians in the area, I'm not a clinician, but clinicians in the area will know that. Uh, asking people about whether they have any memory problems assumes, of course, full insight into their own condition uh, and it will seem a sensible question. But as a screening test, it possibly will fail for sensitivity, well, not sensitivity, but specificity. In other words, people will report having problems with their memory, but they, in fact, are quite depressed for whatever reason. And so we have to be aware of that. And of course, clinicians will be aware of that. I'm not a clinician. But I think it is important to, to defer to experts, like the National Screening Programme, how we want to advance a case for screening of dementia. What we do not want is people on the sly being given a diagnosis of dementia and even worse, not being, a, being told they have a diagnosis of dementia. That would be a disaster. Uh, a correct diagnosis of dementia is important for living well with dementia as reflected in current policy guidelines from NICE QS 30. Now the issue there is that having a diagnosis of dementia is not a write-off by any stretch of the imagination. The house can be improved, the home can be improved design-wise, adaptations can be fit in, fitted, people can be encouraged to live in an ambient environment through innovations and um, people like Norman McNamara are amazing but in uh, leaders, leadership for dementia friendly communities and even gypsies with dementia will want to be may want to be have this aspect of policy touch them. So I think uh, the word of the day really is context. We must have context for any individual with dementia. Compassion, care, not seeing it as a target of policy in a cack and manner. But another word must be responsible. People should have reasonable expectations of what to expect. If there's a magic bullet for dementia, uh, maybe a stop preventing it altogether is a worthy cause, but the eth ethicist should be involved because slowing somebody's death is actually, uh, well, everyone will agree, in medicine you must at first do no harm. And of course, uh, in this current climate, we have to think about what we're doing responsibly in terms of national policy uh, because dementia is one of many conditions which GPs and other clinicians see on a daily basis. So anyway, that's my coffee break up. Thanks very much for listening to me. I hope uh, that some of these issues have touched you and talk to you and if you have any uh, comments uh, please do not direct them at me but direct them at Professor Burns who's the National Clinical Lead for Dementia he's at at A Burns A B U R N S 1907 thanks very much thanks